Day 551 of the Trump administration, and we have breaking news again this evening. We'll get right to it. We have one of the recordings made by Michael Cohen back in 2016 with then-presidential candidate Donald Trump. In the recording, which first aired tonight on CNN, Cohen and Trump appear to be heard discussing arrangements surrounding payment to former Playboy model Karen McDougal. The payment was eventually made, we know now, by Trump friend David Pecker, head of the company that owns and publishes the National Enquirer. Cohen attorney Lanny Davis supplied the tape you're about to hear to CNN tonight. You're going to hear at first the president who appears to be finishing up a phone call. We do not wor know if there has been any editing or altering of the original recording. Here it is now in its entirety. Let me know what's happening, okay? Oh. Oh. Maybe because of this, it would be better if you didn't go, you know? Maybe because of this, uh, for that one, you know, I think what you should do is get rid of this because it's so false what they're saying. It's such bull****. Um, I think, I think this goes away quickly. I think what, I think it's probably better. Do the Charleston thing, just this time. Uh, yeah, in two weeks it's fine. I think right now it's it's better. You know? Okay, honey, you take care of yourself. Thanks, Pam. Yep, I'm proud of you. So long, bye. What's up, Mike? Great poll, by the way. Yeah. See you. Great poll. Making progress. Big time. And you guys are good guys. Oh, Pastor Scott. Can't believe us. No, no, Pastor Scott. What's what's happening? Oh no. no can we use him anymore? Oh yeah, hundred. No, you're talking about Mark Burns. He, we felt him. Well, just... I, I don't mean that. Uh, Mark Burns. Can we use him? No. Anymore? No. Richard um, Lefra, I'm sorry. Richard uh, Lefra just called. He just had me have a chance. He had an idea for you. Okay. okay. Um, so we got served from the New York Times, I told you this was regarding oh, to unseal the divorce papers with Ivana. Um, we're fighting it. Uh, Kasowitz is going to... Never be able to get that done. Never. Never. Kasowitz doesn't they'll ever be able. They don't have a... Give me a job, please. They don't have a legitimate purpose. And you so, have a, a woman that doesn't want to see it. Correct. Right. So, so been handling Yes. It. And it's all... It's been going on for a while. For about two, three weeks now. All you have to do is delay it for... Even after that, it's not going to ever be opened. There's no, there's no purpose for it. Um, told you about Charleston. Um, I need to open up a company for the transfer of all of that info regarding our friend David, you know, so that I'm going to do that right away. I've actually come up and, I've spoken, to and I've spoken to Alan Weisselberg about how to set the whole thing up uh, with so what are we gonna funding. The, uh, yes. Um, and it's all the yeah, stuff, all the stuff, because, you know, you never know where that company, no, you never you know where he's going to be. Gets it by Correct. So I'm, I'm all over that. And I spoke to Alan about it. When it comes time for the financing, which will be... Listen, what financing? We'll have to pay you. So I'll pay the no, 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 no. I got... No, no, no. Because it's important, we want to hear again a key part of this conversation. Remember the setting, 2016, before the election, Donald Trump and Michael Cohen on a recording ultimately seized by the FBI, apparently about a payment made to a former Playboy model. I need to open up a company for the transfer of all of that info regarding our friend David, you know, so yeah. that I'm going to do that right away. I've actually come up and, I've spoken, me. and I've spoken to Alan Weisselberg about how to set the whole thing up uh, with so what are we gonna funding. That, uh, yes. Um, and it's all the yeah, stuff, all the stuff, because, you know, you never know where that company, no, you never know where he's no going to be. Gets it by Correct. So I'm, I'm all over that. And I spoke to Alan about it when it comes time for the financing, which will be... Listen, what financing? We'll have to pay you. So I'll pay the kid. No, 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 no. I got no, no, no. Check. CNN says tonight that Trump's attorney, attorney Rudy Giuliani was aware it had the recording. Trump waived his attorney-client privilege that allowed this tape to be released to prosecutors. Giuliani told CNN that the privilege was waived because he and his team believe it'll help Trump. 
The two sides disagree about what is heard on the recording. Lanny Davis, Cohen's lawyer, points to Trump seemingly using the word cash after Cohen mentions financing. Giuliani, in a phone call to reporters last week, accused Cohen of raising the idea of cash payments. Tonight, Giuliani was reached by telephone to talk with Laura Ingram of Fox News. The president does bring up cash, but he says, don't pay with cash. <laughs> And then Cohen says, no, no, no. And the president says, check. And then Cohen says, I got it. The point and, is, and, the president and, wants the transaction to be memorialized. I don't think anyone can suggest that this represents anything where the president did anything wrong. With that, let's bring in our leadoff panel on a Tuesday night. A lot to talk about. And with us to do so, Robert Costa, national political reporter for The Washington Post, moderator of Washington Week on PBS, Jackie Combs, White House editor for The Los Angeles Times, Mimi Rocha, former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, now a distinguished fellow in criminal justice at Pace University School of Law, and Emily Jane Fox here with us in New York, senior reporter for Vanity Fair, whose new book is about the Trump family. Good evening and welcome to you all. Emily, because you are most steeped on a day-to-day -day basis with all things Cohen and Trump, I'm going to begin with you. Why did this come out tonight? What else do you know about this and other recordings? What's interesting about the timing tonight is on Friday night, we knew about what was on the recording according to Rudy Giuliani. And my sources in Cohen World were already telling me at that point that this was not the, the true narrative in their mind. And I think over the weekend, there was some stewing going on, that this was not what they believed was the truth, and that the truth would ultimately come out. And I think that there was a lot of growing frustration that people were accepting this narrative that Rudy Giuliani put out as truth. The president and his attorneys had waived privilege on these recordings. And so I think there was a little bit of a throwing their hands up moment today where they were like, this is becoming the actual narrative. It's not the actual narrative in our reading of or listening to the recording. And so they wanted to set the record straight. And I think that that is the, the defining reason why the, this, this tape came out this let's, evening. Let's talk atmospherics for just five seconds. I've heard this already kind of erroneously referred to as a phone conversation. This, by all accounts, is an in-person meeting. You can hear room tone. The audio points to it as if it was recorded uh, by, uh, say, a device on Michael Cohen's lap sitting across from Donald Trump at Trump Tower. That's exactly right. This was a meeting that took place in person in part of their day-to-day -day normal interaction of just, you can hear him basically going running through a checklist of all the things that he had to tell the president. Now, what's interesting to me, uh, and, and this was a point that actually Rudy Giuliani brought up to me on Friday, was that the fact that they had these kinds of conversations showed that they couldn't, that, that Michael Cohen was allowed to do these kinds of transactions on his own without running them by his boss. And he thought that that was exculpatory because of the Stormy Daniels stuff, where Michael Cohen had said in the past that he acted on his own in those payments. But what I think is interesting is this recording now shows that Michael Cohen did have the time to run these by his boss and that now President Trump did know about the ins and outs of all of these things that were going on. So even though he was in the midst of this turbulent, very busy presidential campaign, he was very well aware of what Michael Cohen was doing when. This brings us to Robert Costa, whose piece has just, we noted, uh, posted for The Washington Post. You are just off the phone with people very close to the principals in this case. Uh, my phone's dead. <laughs> really? <laughs> we we're, we're should be able a, to get you well, a complimentary charge. I'm sure here. we can. But we're in the middle of a legal war here. I mean, there, there's a lot going on. Just got off the phone with Lanny Davis. He said, as Emily was talking about, they felt prompted to do this tonight, to sit down and release the tape, because in, in Lanny's words, he doesn't want Michael Cohen to be a punching bag. And a few minutes later, I had a long conversation with Mayor Giuliani, and he started almost debating me about whether the president knew about the McDougal deal based on this whole recording. He said it's open to interpretation. We can have a fight about that. He thinks the president, in his view of the whole thing, was just learning about this from that conversation. So you already see both sides fighting. And the most important thing I was looking for tonight from Giuliani was, is a pardon in the works for Michael Cohen. As this escalates, as this whole thing becomes even a bigger fight between the both sides, could a pardon be on the table? Giuliani said he would not 
say yes or no. He just said it's extremely inappropriate to talk about pardons at this time. He said there is certainly no discussion at this moment, and he said any pardon would be up to the president. And let's talk Turkey here for one second, since we're all dealing from the same hymnal, the same recording. You don't hear the president express surprise or ask questions about this venture that someone is seemingly setting up an LLC um, to take care of. No surprise from then candidate Trump. And it's been deeply reported by the Post and others that there's been a longstanding relationship with David Pecker, who runs American Media, which is part of that whole media organization, with Michael Cohen, with, with Trump when he was a tabloid figure. They've had this very close nexus for a long time. Uh, also, it's been pointed out the president's pseudonym on some of these matters in court papers was David Dennison. So there's much <laughs> speculation on the web tonight as to which David they're talking about. Exactly right. I will not make you answer that. Can we get a charge for uh, Bob Costa's <laughs> phone? Mimi Roca, uh, the only adult attorney here in the room, please save us. First of all, do you hear any laws being broken as you listen to that recording? So from a prosecutor's perspective, what I see here, here on this recording is a good piece of evidence in showing that some laws were broken. On its face, by itself, probably not. But no piece of evidence stands alone. We've talked before about, you know, prosecutors take, it's, it's building bricks on bricks. You build to build the wall. And this is one brick. And by the way, the prosecutors potentially are not going to be listening to this in a vacuum. They're going to have it with potentially Michael Cohen interpreting it for him. And that's very important because he's one of the participants in the conversation. And so we can all sit here and try and guess about which David it is and you know what they meant when they said X. But if Cohen cooperates, this shows people how valuable he can be because he can interpret conversations like this. So as to the laws that this could show were broken, we've all talked a lot about campaign finance uh, violations. One of the hardest things to show in a campaign finance case is showing that the payment was made to impact the election. Right. I think we've talked a lot about the uh, Edwards case and how that case, they did not get a conviction in large part because they weren't able to show that the payment to silence the, women, the woman in that case was made to actually impact the election. Here, there's some distinguishing factors. This is made much closer to the time of the election. So we now know we have a payment being made whether it's by AMI or directly from Trump and Cohen, uh, doesn't really matter at the end of the day, but it's to silence this woman from coming out very close to the election. And there's a little nugget in this recording that's before the part where they're talking about uh, the actual payment to Karen McDougal. They're talking about uh, keeping the record sealed in Ivana the Trump's divorce case. divorce case. And Trump says, uh, Cohen assures him it's never coming out. They're, they're never going to be unsealed. And Trump says, well, you just have to keep them sealed for, and it's not clear to me whether he says a couple of months or a couple of weeks, yep. but clearly what he's talking about there is he's looking at a time frame that they need to keep information under wraps. There he's talking about Ivana Trump, but guess what? It's followed right after by the conversation about this payment to Karen McDougal. So that right there is a really, could be a really crucial piece of intent evidence in a campaign finance case showing that this is what they're doing with that payment to Karen McDougal. And that's often the hardest part of such a charge. There also could be potential fraud charges here. They're talking about setting up a company. I'm guessing they didn't tell the bank the truth uh, when they, you know, actually wrote the check, if Purpose they wrote a check. The LLC or exactly. Yeah. So there's some potential fraud. There's even some potential fraud on Karen McDougal if she was scammed into thinking she was uh, being paid for one thing but was really paid for another thing. So I do think that there's a whole host of crimes that this could uh, be evidence of, uh, contribute to. Wow, that's a lot. That's exactly why we wanted you here tonight. Jackie, I was just going through in my head the last time, and I don't think it's happened before. We have a senior member of the masthead of an important West Coast publication <laughs> from the safe distance of Washington reacting to news that broke in New York. Uh, that being our set of rules, uh, what do you make early on now of the potential blowback on the president come morning? Well, you've just uh, addressed the potential legal uh, aspects of this. I think as a political matter, um, there's not a lot that I see 
changing because people have so baked in the cake of Donald Trump that he's had these relationships with women, that he doesn't tell the truth, as he didn't tell the truth about Karen McDougal and his knowledge of the payment, et cetera. When I first heard this tape, initially I thought it was completely ambiguous and that each side, pro-Trump, anti-Trump, just people in the middle, would hear in it what they wanted to. And I still believe that to some extent. But the more I listen to it, the more it's clear that this is not a good look for Donald Trump. He is talking clearly in sort of conspiratorial tones, almost code, with his lawyer fixer. And it's clear that he's not surprised by this talk of Karen McDougal, yet he told reporters on Air Force One that he knew nothing about it. And so it's it's just a, it, it, it almost feels like a talk between a godfather and, you know, his consigliere. It's just not it's just icky. But but whether you know, but that, whether that changes anything politically, I just have to doubt it at this point. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.